Fantastic Football Talk. We got Steve Hellwagon on the line from uh, 247 Sports. You can join him right there at Bucknut. Steve, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I am doing just fine. It's nice to see the sunshine and some warmer temperatures. I think they're here to stay. We might got possibly get blasted one more time, but I think we're we're through it and we've seen the other side now. Yeah, opening day tomorrow in Cincinnati, they're saying 65 degrees and sun. Oh. So that is uh, just about picture perfect. So we'll see how the Reds do in the first of 162. Yeah, 65 and sunny sounds amazing, especially when you're a baseball fan in the Midwest or the Northeast. And and you've seen so many opening days come and go at 36 degrees with uh, flurries flying in the air. So 65 and sun, perfect. You've been yeah. out to Ohio State football practice, I would guess, Steve. Well, it's been a mixed bag for me. I've been able to go to one or two of the practices that they had open, but I've missed some of the time because I went to Tulsa this past weekend for the NCAA basketball tournament uh, to follow Ohio State. So I'm uh, reasonably up to date on what's going on. It sounds like uh, they're seven practices in, uh, 14 practices in the spring game coming up on April 13th, just uh, about two and a half weeks away. So uh, seems like it's been very productive so far, and uh, the Buckeyes are, are building toward 2019. Uh, Ryan Day, his first full season as the head coach, and uh, <clears throat> a lot of talent across the board, even though they had six guys leave early for the NFL. There's still plenty of talent uh, across the board for this Ohio State team, guys who were either uh, backups or shared time with starting players in recent years, and I think that uh, they are positioned uh, to once again compete for the Big Ten Championship, going for third three in a row, and uh, get back into the college football playoff. Two guys who are now out for the spring, wide receiver Cameron Babb, I believe was a knee injury, was one, and uh, linebacker uh, Justin Hilliard was an Achilles injury. And my guess is if we do see him, it may not be until midseason or later on. A year ago, Tough Borland had an Achilles injury for Ohio State and was able to get back uh, reasonably uh, soon in the season. So, uh, Bab, this is his second injury and a major setback for him. He was a, fresh, or a freshman a year ago, one of the big names in the 2018 recruiting class. And now uh, I would say his football career could be in a little bit of doubt after a second tough injury for him. Uh, Hilliard would be a fifth-year senior, and I guess uh, if he doesn't play this year, he could apply for a sixth year perhaps the following year. But, again, um, I'm not sure he's projected – at this point, to be a starter by any means. So uh, maybe he will just try and come back and play whatever he can this year on special teams and in a support role. Uh, neither of them projected as starters, but it erodes some of your depth, certainly. Got Steve Hillwagon on the line from uh, 247 Sports Bucknuts covering Ohio State football with a basketball season over for the men. Uh, falling in that second game of the NCAA tournament to Houston. All right, Steve, uh, we've got a, uh, a viewer on the live chat asking about Tate Martell. Of course, he's moved on. But what were your impressions about Tate Martell's uh, limited performance on the field at Ohio State and the projection for what he could be as a starting quarterback at that level? You know, I don't think we ever got a full accounting of how good he could possibly be. I think early last season, um, he was Dwayne Haskins backup and he got into some games early last season. And I want to say he completed 10 or 11 consecutive passes at one point uh, early in the season and really did a nice job. Uh, then as the season wore on, they tried to use him in short yardage situations and in the goal line. And uh, it was not a, a good situation. They would come in, they'd have penalties or there'd be a bad snap and they turn the ball over uh, we never really got to see, uh, I guess, everything he is capable of. I think if he puts the work in, uh, he could be a guy that can lead a team to a pretty good season. Um, is he limited in what he can do because he's only 5'11"? That, that could be. Um, I, I don't know. But uh, I think if he puts the time in to learn the scheme and continues to improve his fundamentals, 
and uh, takes what a defense will give him and not try and force something in there to make the heroic play, then I, again, as I said, I think he's a guy that, you know, Miami, for instance, could win eight or nine games with him as their starting quarterback. Is he a guy that's going to help you win 12 games? I don't know about that uh, because then you're going against the very best of the very best to try and win those last three or four games, whatever they could be, Clemson or, uh, you know, whoever in the ACC that they'd have to play. So I know they opened with Florida, which would be uh, an amazing thing. If he, he, could, uh, he was cleared to play, obviously, by the NCAA with his transfer, and if he gets to start the first game against Florida, that would be uh, remarkable. But uh, I know he's got some tough competition uh, for that starting spot there at Miami. So uh, I, for one, uh, you know, to me, he was a really good kid in his time at Ohio State. And I think a lot of people up here are wishing him the best. It just didn't work out in his favor. They got Justin Fields, and, uh, you know, that, that was just kind of the way it worked out that uh, Ohio State – and Ryan Day kind of made their preference known that this was the guy who's going to lead us going forward. And uh, Tate Martell decided to take his ball and go to Miami, and uh, the NCAA went with it. So there you go. Steve, when you ran down the teams in the ACC that Miami would have to contend with, of course, you start with Clemson. And then I, I felt you kind of searching around, and I was doing Yeah, who else thing. is in that conference? I'm trying Because they have some great teams like in North Carolina that will pop up and have a 10 or 11 win season, and they revert back to four or five wins. There's been no consistency among the rest of that league. Uh, even Virginia Tech, which was a standard bearer the decade before, has been up and down, and Florida State's going through the worst stretch of its football in the modern era. I mean, really, when you think about it. So, yeah, there is some quality in the ACC, and I'm sure there will be teams that will uh, – contend with Clemson in the division and for the conference championship. But um, I've spent no time studying who those teams could be. I'll tell you that. Well, there's no question that the likes of North Carolina, Boston College, and some others could help the conference like Syracuse did to a certain extent last year. But it's all yes. for me about Florida State and Miami. Those two are down. And if they, the Clemson, the, 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 basically they have to be up for the ACC to have any kind of depth like you see in the yeah. Big Ten. 